Hello and welcome. Now, before we dive into Beyond Meat to see whether you should consider buying the stock or if it's just another hyped up company ultimately doomed to fail, please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the thumbs up button if you find the video useful or enjoyable as it will really help the channel moving forward. So Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. Why is it worthwhile talking about this stock? Well, as you can see from the chart here, and I'm recording after the market closed Friday, May the 8th, by the way, the stock has been on an absolute tear of late, especially the jump from 100 to around $125 after the company absolutely annihilated earnings per share or EPS, as well as revenue estimates for Q1 2020. Now, analyst consensus had EPS pegged around negative 0.06, meaning that the company would be at a net loss for the quarter, but they actually swooped in at 0.03 cents in the black and made a net profit. Likewise, Beyond Meat's quarterly revenues came in at just under 97.1 million, almost 10 million ahead of an estimated revenue of 87.1. And all of this on the back of the shutdown due to the global pandemic, so it's quite an impressive feat, all things considered. Beyond Meat actually has a pretty solid track record of not just beating, but crushing estimates, and have done so in three of the last four quarters missing only the final quarter of 2019 by a single cent. And as you'll see as we progress through the video, I believe this is part of the reason why I think BYND is a solid buy and hold for the long term, because it is consistently being underestimated by both analysts and the public at large, suggesting all information is certainly not priced in. But both you and I know that EPS, estimates, and net profit aren't the only factors that drive a company's stock price upwards. I mean, just look at companies like Uber and Tesla. Uber has never made a profit in its entire existence. And we just saw it go from lows on March 18 of about $14, $15 to now just under $33. It actually shot up from 30 to 33, despite reporting a $3 billion Q1 loss. Wowzers. And although Tesla has been doing extraordinarily well of late and reporting EPS in the black, they have a history of negative EPS and slumping below estimates, but it has never been a factor in the mind of bulls that have driven the stock to $800, $900 in recent months. It goes without saying that the pandemic has been the key driver for the dip in prices over the last six weeks or so, and the V-shaped graph you see here is reminiscent of many, many other stocks out there, but not just beyond meat. But some stocks have come back stronger than ever before the crash in March, when the Dow Jones was at all-time highs. But it's these stocks that have probably made savvy investors a buck or two, but those that managed to pick up a few shares since the low. Looking at the chart again, Beyond Meat certainly has eclipsed the price levels it hit in late January and throughout February, and has almost tripled since March 18. To put it in perspective, BYND is up just over 76% year to date, which is extraordinary when compared to the S&P 500, which is at about minus 9% year to date. Tesla gets all the love and hype, and deservingly so, and I will probably continue to bring up comparisons of the two companies based sheerly on incredible growth and that they are disrupting their respective industries. But since the March 18 lows, the returns on both BYND and Tesla are actually comparable at somewhere between 2x and 3x. While we're on the topic of redonkulous growth, just thought I'd quickly mention another company I've been eagerly watching, Wayfair, ticker symbol W, which has been a stuff of dreams. It has shot up to just under $119 from March 18 lows of about $25. No matter how you slice it, that's about an 800% return. I might have to make a separate video about Wayfair and e-commerce players in general like Etsy, Amazon, Shopify, who have all accelerated and benefited greatly from the pandemic. As more and more people venture online to buy things, as we start looking at brick and mortar establishments in the rearview mirror. But I digress. Going back to Beyond Meat, we should probably first take a step back from the stock price and just try to understand their core business, right? As it pays to do our due diligence and actually understand and research the companies we invest in. Here's the company's mission statement from the website. At Beyond Meat, we started with simple questions. Why do you need an animal to create meat? Why can't you build meat directly from plants? It turns out you can, so we did. We hope our plant-based meats allow you and your family to eat more, not less, of the traditional dishes you'd love, while feeling great about the health, sustainability, and animal welfare benefits of plant protein. 
Together, we can truly bring exciting change to the plate and beyond. So you can see some of their products here. A breakfast sausage replacement, some burger patties, and a ground beef replacement called Beyond Beef. I just wanted to point out that I understand a lot of people out there probably watching this video are carnivores or at least omnivores and aren't really interested in Beyond's products or plant-based meat replacements and are also wondering who in their right mind is willing to buy these products other than hippies or vegans. And that's fair, I suppose. And I'm not trying to be bipartisan or politicize the issue, but the world really is evolving. And with greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture hitting unsustainable levels and greatly contributing to global warming, I think it's certainly a topic of interest that is being put under scrutiny worldwide. It's a positive change that I think needs and will be embraced, just like reducing the usage of single-use plastics. So I respect their mission and no one said that you can't help change the world one beef patty at a time and make money. Just ask Beyond Meat CEO Ethan Brown. I would actually give four other reasons as to why I think plant-based meat has a real future. So for starters, I live in Sweden and you can't go in, into any of the supermarkets and grocery stores without coming face to face with the choice of everything being either regular or ecological. There are actually entire sections of each store that give you that choice. If you walk into any McDonald's 10, 15 years ago, they barely had any salad alternatives, and now there are entire submenus with halloumi, fish, vegetarian, and green alternatives. Secondly, meat processing factories in the US at least are facing huge issues with outbreaks causing mass shutdowns. People are testing positive and they are having to send them home to stop the spread. This will likely have downstream impacts in the coming weeks or even months as American stores face meat shortages. The CEO of Beyond Meat actually recently stated his company is proactively pushing their products onto grocery store shelves at a discount in some cases in an attempt to capitalize on the shortfall and boost brand equity. It might sound short term, but I think if people see the products are tasty and fulfill their protein intake needs at a discount of that, they might latch on for the long term as well. The third point is that there is a potential runway here due to the total addressable market of hundreds of millions, if not billions of consumers. You can see this article from CNBC with Jim Cramer stating, the virus could propel plant-based Beyond Meat into a giant like Amazon or Facebook. Now, personally, I don't always agree with everything Kramer puts out there, but I think on this point, we do see eye to eye. Amazon is a $1.2 billion beast, with Jeff Bezos currently holding the mantle of the world's richest man, and Facebook isn't that far behind at $600 billion and is considered a Silicon Valley darling. Beyond Meat is currently at only around $8 billion market cap. So in an ideal world, it's possible many years down the road, we might see a tenfold increase of the company and the stock price, of course. The fourth and final point is that Beyond Meat aren't just selling directly to consumers, but are forging strategic and synergetic partnerships with huge restaurant brands in the US, but also globally. Look at this snippet from Wikipedia outlining some of the current ones. March 2019, A&W with over 850 store locations across Canada. December 28, Carl's Jr. started launching a bunch of edibles. July 2019, 163 Dunkin' Donuts in Manhattan. Parties in October 2019. KFC in August 2019. Yes, KFC that sells deep fried chicken. September 2019, McDonald's Canada. January 2018, TGI Fridays joined the party. And here's the doozy, 3,300 Starbucks in China, the country with over 1.4 billion, billion with a B. Personally, I believe this is just the beginning. And if you see traction amongst customers, it will become ubiquitous across diners, cafes, small and medium-sized restaurants, and just seep into our collective consciousness like Coca-Cola or Air Jordans. The last point I wanted to talk about in this video, that is if we go back to focusing on the current stock price, is a company valuation and financials. The first thing is that the forward PE, that is the price to earnings, is ridiculously high at 625. To put that in perspective, the average company in the S&P 500 is at about 25, so this is orders of magnitude higher than that. Even the PEG ratio, which adjusts the PE ratio to account for projected growth, is still really high at 6.73. Amazon and Tesla, for example, have PEGs around 2. Price to sales ratio also doesn't help Beyond's cause, as it suggests that for every dollar the company is worth, sales revenue only represents about 5% of it. 
So overall, the ratios look unfavorable, grossly overweight, and suggest the company is overvalued. Now, conventional logic would dictate you should run for the hills and never even put a dime of your hard-earned cash into such a company. But what we need to consider is that the company is extremely young, having only IPO'd about a year ago. Startups in general usually require time to grow into valuation and reach an equilibrium of sorts to where the rate of increase is steady but sustainable. Beyond Meat probably won't reach that for years to come. Heck, Shopify, for instance, IPO'd in May 2015, some four years before Beyond Meat, and it still has a ridiculous valuation, but that hasn't stopped it from hitting $700 a share and a forward PE ratio of 10,000. Shopify is killing the e-commerce space right now, and I've seen some articles out there suggesting it is making a run at Amazon with its easy-to-use platform. I have no idea if they're going to reach that lofty target, but to suggest the valuation is too high is certainly a bet that short sellers are on the losing end of right now. Now, where Beyond looks really solid is its balance sheet. You can see it's been exponentially growing its cash reserves from 400 million in 2016, almost a billion in 2017, 2 billion in 2018, and now during this pandemic, holding almost 2.5 billion. That's really great news, as we've been seeing a plethora of companies out there, such as the cruise liners and aviation stocks, borrowing stacks of money from the Fed and selling bonds at high rates of return just to provide themselves with a liquidity buffer to weather the economic downturn for 2020. Beyond extremely liquid, even if business was heading south, but as we saw from the Q1 results, things are actually improving on the revenue front, so you can only assume that their balance sheet will become even more robust over time. I've highlighted its total assets, which also includes property plant equipment, as well as intangibles, just to show that they're even more asset loaded than what their cash suggests. Now, compare that further down the balance sheet to their total current liabilities of 316 million, and you can see that they literally could pay off all their short-term debt tomorrow if they were so inclined. Even when you include their total liabilities, it is still only a fraction of the company's total assets. The other point to note is that although their cash and other assets have been growing tremendously, that their liabilities have managed to stay controllable with the growth rate not much more than their assets. Finally, if we take a quick glance at their income statement, we can deduce that they are starting to benefit from economies of scale and that the company is on the verge of profitability. They were making losses of 25 mil, 30 mil, and 30 mil again, respectively, back in 2016, 17, and 18. But it is obvious that 2019 saw them get closer to break even and the trailing 12 months, including the profitable quarters we've already covered, is only $4 million in the red. $4 million for a company that is turning over $300 million and growing revenues year on year at about 3x is downright insignificant. The company won't be growing at 3x indefinitely, but even if we scale that down to a more conservative figure, we can extrapolate that the company will be making cash hand over fist in very short order in the next two, three, even five years. The last part to note here is that EPS has been negative in previous years, but as we've seen, the EPS is most definitely heading north with the last quarter, as a reminder, up at 0.03 cents. This company only IPO'd a year ago and are already on the verge of profitability. This is very impressive, and the stock price has reflected this. You can see that it initially listed at $25 per share, began trading at $46 on its first day, surged 163% initially, actually causing the NASDAQ to hold trading due to volatility, and now we are staring down the barrel at $133 per share. This is tremendous capital growth, and I believe we can certainly expect more of the same moving forward. Okay, so let's take one last look at the chart here. Even for shorter term traders, I could see this stock reaching the 160 to 170 mark from back in 2019 and potentially even retest the 234.90 high on July 26th. To sum up all the info we've gathered from the balance sheet and the income statement, the company is in a much better position now than even a year ago, not to mention three or four years ago. So I would not bet on too much downward action as we saw it experience it after the 2019 highs, when investors had all these doubts about the balance sheet and the income statement. So shorts and bears beware. <laughs> That's not to say we won't continue to see volatility as 
this economy and market are completely throwing things for a loop with high valuations and record high unemployment in general not even being a factor. And of course, anything can happen in the stock market. But in my opinion, the odds are in Beyond Meat's favor of continued prosperity, especially in the post-pandemic world that is also mindful of carbon emissions. Thanks for watching.